I'll speak really loud if the music is still on. I'll speak really loud for y'all. That'd be helpful. <laughs> you have to do the same for me in return. What did What did you ask me? Well, so looking at Jamie, he doesn't have a person on the knee or anything like that. And he's rocking the rest of the gym. I know he's standing on the court here. No, it's just because he's standing around. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a pseudo assistant coach for us right now. Yeah. I'm curious with the, the fifth guy that you've been looking for, Josh been that guy so far in, in the pickup team? Yeah, we've, uh, we haven't really had five set guys out there. We've looked at a lot of different combinations. You know, the, the Dev, Brad, and, and Book were all on different teams today. Um, still looking at a lot of combinations. What is it now that you know the roster completely? What are you looking for in this uh, sort of Northridge field? And whichever guy we want, we have in there. You know, we want them to play to their skill set. You know, if they're a defender, we want to go out there and play the role of being that, that defender. If we want to put an extra shooter, you know, play to your strengths. We was talking the other day about how they kind of hung themselves with him and KD and both kind of step on each other, trying not to step on each other's toes. I see this going to the floor. What else do you find helpful in terms of guys feeling more comfortable working with each other and other spots? Yeah, you just have to have a, a feel for it, really. You know, I mean, if uh, one guy's getting unutilized on a certain day, you know, you circle back and you overdo it the next day, you know, and, and just. You just keep everybody rotating in, in, in terms of uh, making sure they're all being used at the right level and feeling good about uh, how things are going. Brad, I know he's excited about this opportunity in particular. I feel like maybe things are kind of sleeping on him as everybody talks about both of them. They may be, but I, I'm not. I'm not sleeping on the value that he brings to the table. I know that. Um, they want to sleep on Bradley Beal. They can do that at their own risk. Coach, there's a narrative for some that Book isn't as much of a willing defender as he is on offense. What have you learned about him on defense and how he competes with him? If I would say that, I didn't see practice today. <laughs> he and KD were our best defenders today. You know, those guys really got after it. Brad did too. Um, but those guys are are really, really defending with passion right now. They, they, they're buying into the, the system and the scheme that we're putting in and um, you know, really putting a lot of effort and focus to executing the coverages, but you know, just having a, a mentality, a mentality ball, the way they're competing to get stopped. What kind of tone is that set when you're top guys that are setting that? It's everything. It's everything that's necessary, you know, because if they they set that tone with their leadership, that's that's their form of leading, right? And they set that tone with the leadership. Everybody else has a higher standard, you know, and then the group plays at a higher level. Coach, given, given what you just showed last year and how well he shot the ball, were you surprised you guys were able to get him in the summer? Yeah, a little bit. You know, I mean, you never know what guy's uh, value is going to be in the open market, but uh, to be able to get him uh, to come here and compliment the guys that we have, a 44% three-point shooter uh, that can make plays off the bounce and then guard, you know, he's, he's a hell of a pickup for us, and it's going to be a big factor for us. He and Kevin showed a lot of chemistry together in a certain amount of time. Is that something as a coach you kind of notice right away when two players have that chemistry? Yeah, you definitely see it out there, and, and he's got he's got chemistry with Book as well. The Book knows to find him. You know, every time he's got the ball, he's, he's got an antenna of where Yuta is. So is there any kind of overhelp, we're looking for him. Coach, with all the talk about load management, how do you determine the minutes um, as far as a player like KD and my different for a couple of years? Do you do that now or is that a process throughout the year? Of the season? Yeah, constant conversations. You know, I mean, I, I know the idea of, uh, of what I would like to do with the, with these guys and their minutes. Um, you know, but you just have to have a common sense approach to it. You don't want to overdo it over an 82 game marathon. Um, you know, but those guys are horses, man. They want to be in there and you know, we want them out there. You know, so, um, you know, we'll, just, we'll be smart with it, though. It's like a delicate dance considering you need to be healthy and strong heading into the playoffs. Right, but we got to build habits, too. You know, we got to build habits and we got to learn to win with one another. You guys have all wanted different levels in their own spots. Um, but we all haven't, including the coaching staff, but we all haven't done it together. You know, so uh, it's going to be an important 82-game season for us, 82-game regular season for us. Yeah, I, I feel like that symmetry is off to a, a really great start. Um, you know, I feel like the guys, uh, you know, we're, we're always enjoying some banter, you know, when it's when, when, when it's time for banter. 
and uh, you know, being serious when it's time to be serious, you know, and there's uh, intelligent questions, you know, about the, the things we're doing and make sure that we're understanding things with clarity. And, um, you know, the energy has been just off the charts the first three days. A lot of these guys have been, uh, I mean, but including yourself, but are you talking to some of the younger guys like Bull or are you Doka or – you know, maybe even you know guys like Saban, you know, to separate them from the guys who have been in this league along. Yeah, I mean, we talked to you know just like any young player, you know, talk to those guys a little bit more. We don't have any true rookies on this team, which you know the head coach doesn't hate, doesn't hate that. You know, we like having vets on our team, and um, you know, but those guys have been sponges. You know, from different things up. Curious, coach. So we have, you got, you got seventeen guys. You got to get that number down to fifteen. What? Are you looking for in terms of the process of got, somebody's got to go? So how are you? Yeah, it's just the just a standard. We're always playing at the highest level, you know, and uh, they're going to earn those jobs. So um, it's just a healthy competition. Uh, we believe in all all of those guys. You know, I, I wish we could keep everyone. Um, you know, the, everybody we have in uniform right now, I know could contribute for us. So that's a good problem, and uh, you know, make those decisions when the time comes. How have you handled that in the past? Have you been in that situation? Before? Yeah, Prince, case by case. You know, I mean, there, there's there's times where you know we'll tell two or three guys, like, hey, we got one spot. It's going to be up to you three guys, and go compete for it. You know, and sometimes it's more about you know, do we need more shooters? Do we need more defenders? You know, it's not always about winning the job, but you know what skill set fits the roster the best. So all of that factors in. Uh, I don't think I had ever met him. If I did, it was brief. Um, but obviously, competing against uh, against him in you know those uh, series is uh, with the with the Miami Heat, you know Pacer Seed series. You know, you know who he is as a player. Um, he was actually a Pacer prior to me becoming a Pacer. So some of my coaches that I worked with in Indiana uh, had a relationship with him. Biz had a relationship with him. Ron had a relationship with him. So. Uh, knew him indirectly, uh, but didn't really know him that well uh, directly. How's it been just working with him? Last uh, James Champ's the man. <laughs> He's great to work with. You know, you guys have been around for a few years. You know what kind of guy he is. He's very straightforward, very intelligent, uh, really committed to his his craft, you know, in terms of studying uh, leadership and roster building and management and you know, all those types of things. Um, you know, he's one of the this organization's greatest assets, honestly. What's been the dialogue with Nurkic early on defensively? Uh, with Nurk, just execute our scheme. You know, we're teaching him our scheme and, um, you know, obviously utilize his passing, utilize his defensive rebounding, maximize his speed. You know, um, the running game is, is, is a habit uh, more so than, you know, actual physical speed, um, you know, and execute what we're asking him to do. Coach, uh, there's an announcement today that Matt Ishby is funding a $100 million plus investment for headquarters for the team. I know you talked about his passion, but what is his, uh, what is your relationship been like with him? And, you know, what is he doing just mean for the city? Yeah, I mean, everything he's doing is just, um, it's it's making the Phoenix Suns the gold standard of the NBA. You know, it, it really is. And I believe over the next 20, 20 years, you know, this is going to be the, the destination, the destination. Uh, in the NBA where players are going to want to uh, play, coaches are going to want to coach. Um, you know, we're doing things uh, in a, in a first-class way here. You know, and, and everything he said at the summer at, at, in Vegas, is we're going to win at everything we do. And uh, he continues to, you know, um, back up his words with action. Coach, you earlier talked about your pace or days. How has your approach to training camp changed since then? <laughs> Very different. One, I work was uh, working for Larry Bird. So there was going to be a high standard of running these guys into the grounds. You know, there was a conditioning piece was always very, very important uh, with Larry. And because of that, I, I feel like my training camps are probably still uh, more aggressive than, than most around the league um, because I believe in those lessons that I learned from Larry. Uh, but, you know, the game's changed over the last, I think it's 12 years since I've been a head coach. And, um, you know, it's, it's just gotten more – more intelligent in terms of managing, you know, our NBA players' bodies. So uh, definitely lighter than, than before. Coach, are you keeping up with the Diamondbacks in the playoffs at all right now? Love it. Love it. I met Tori this summer and uh, I've become a big fan of uh, his approach and him as a person. And I could not be more happy for him. Uh, loved his post-game speech. Like, just loved his post-game speech. 
that's uh it's just it was awesome an awesome moment and uh bring on the dodgers let's go go diamondbacks thanks guys thanks, thanks, thanks you guys. Guys.